Howdy gamers. So this is the next devlog. I am pretty happy. I'm really happy to get to working on things. Last episode was genuinely a sack of garbage. Uh, no idea how that retard decided to actually pr uh, publish that piece of shit. So this next one, I'm going to actually start working on stuff. But before that, something that I wanted to talk about. It's been here on my trailer to remind me right above I shit my pants the other day, which is a story I'm saving for sometime else. Uh, it's been a couple weeks ago now, <laughs> but it's why I'm not doing AI. So the other thing that interests me with development stuff is artificial intelligence. It's something that I think is quite cool. Uh, and it's a lot of the thought that goes into it. And it, a lot of the people I've heard talk about it, genuinely really interesting people to me. And I think that those are the people at the most forefront of what is going to have the most long-term impact, obviously on what's happening. And the problem is there are ethical ways of making, doing things in AI. There's stuff like automated driving. Um, I get there's some things that are a bit questionable, like anyone being able to have like internet remote control over your car and like, it's not perfect, but in general, I don't think it's something that's entirely morally corrupt. Uh, I think in general, it's going to drastically reduce the amount of <laughs> deaths involved in car crashes, which is uh, a pretty prevalent statistic, actually. You look at this, this is just a chart uh, for 15 to 49 year olds, like how many in people in the world die, uh, then the fourth most common thing just below HIV and AIDS is road accidents. So it's really fucking dangerous. Uh, and if you're like someone like me that drives like as much of a piece of shit like I do, uh, your time's numbered. And it has four reasons I will tell in the far future. That's just something that is cool. Just a slight sidetrack. But they're, like that's just an example. But the problem is that, it's, that things like that actually really require a degree and pretty strong connections. So let's say you want to do something that works out of a self-taught thing with computer science. Then you are going to most likely be working in AI that is doing something to collect user data for marketing, which there are a lot of people that want people to work that type of job. So the demand's a lot higher and the amount of people that want to do that is a lot lower. So their standards are a lot lower. So people like me without a college degree can do it. And I do not want to do that. Uh, that's just something I don't want to be active because there's a lot of ways I can with this programming thing and to work into something that I feel like makes the world a worse place. And that's not my goal. I want to do something I'm proud of uh, earning a lot of money and stuff really isn't the top priority. Uh, I'll be earning plenty if I really do anything. Okay. So also whenever I was in high school, I was interested. I was taking medical classes. I actually planned on going, trying to become a doctor when I was younger, kind of 17 and younger. And then when I got more interested in some computer stuff, there were jobs. Uh, and the specifically based on some stuff I've talked to is that places like the CDC hire data scientists. And that's because whenever H1N1, uh, the bird flu or whatever, uh, was happening, it's when I was in medical classes, like, uh, they were like college level, but they were done in high school, kind of like an AP class if you're in the U S and that was happening. So we learned a lot about it and I was really interested in it. And the whole pandemic stuff, uh, a long time ago, really interested me which now everyone is a fucking expert on pandemics because of Facebook and coronavirus. So regardless, I really like that stuff. And I saw there's data scientist jobs and working with large data was actually something that interested me and it's fun. So on my Trello, I wrote, uh, COVID has taught us that scientists cannot be trusted. Science is fake and that there would be no new China without the Chinese communist party. Look at you go, Jester. So, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that interest, but in non meme translating that from meme into English, uh, what I mean by that is just that that's gone. <laughs> Any care or passion towards that is well gone. And also no degree meme. Also, when I was still in university, I was able to take a class and I did pass this one, which was a senior level database course. And, uh, while I did barely pass it, I did enjoy it quite a bit. It seemed really cool to me. Uh, just part of my autism, just doing like a crazy amount of large things, like working with tens or hundreds of thousands of pieces of data and compiling that in such a way that it becomes useful information was just uh, cool to me. So that was pretty fun. Oh, yeah. So I can't have a degree. That's really the third one. I was very lucky when I was 
17 years old and uh with that medical class stuff and with some universities i was visiting i was actually able to see some of these students that were working on the project a while ago that it, that are the people using ai to de- like do cancer screenings to see if there's tumors and that's stuff that actually later on kind of caught in the news i think it kind of was in the time even because this would have been in 2015 so seeing stuff like that i'm like this is really cool and so ai and stuff was actually my first real interest into computer science type stuff but without a college degree it's really just uh becoming a fucking rahid trying to collect people's user data and i don't want to do that so yeah that's why i'm not interested in ai uh, slight rant. Hopefully I can cut that a little shorter. So I was talking about, this is a lot longer than I intended. So regardless, I'm excited to actually get into working on the crypto day trading bot. And I'm going to explain that with non-commentary gesture. So yeah. See you then. Yeah. All right. So I've been looking forward to today for quite a bit. I'm going to actually start working on the project, which sounds fun to me and not like other shit. I have a couple of things I need to do. The first one I need to do is I need to... And also execute all of us, right? Be quiet. Shush, 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 shush. Uh, What I need to do is I just... I found this video was uploaded fairly recently, and it's almost exactly what I plan on doing, which is... (laughs) Um... I don't know if that's good or bad. Part of the appeal of this was that I was going to um do a project that really seems like hasn't been done before. Uh, and then this dickhead comes out and is like, oh, I just did it three weeks ago. So that's really epic. Okay, so this is kind of the game plan, the little meme I drew. So I explained this before. I'm going to start working on this. I am going to translate this away from a meme into i uh, I'm going to throw this in a fucking notepad. And I'm going to start writing... Uh, in actual ways i can start working on this all right so i think i've uh put it in words that is going to make it quite easy to figure out how this all like four parts of this program are going to work um the first one is just with stock data um and it's going to the it's just going to work with a single cryptocurrency at the moment it's just going to take the data from a cryptocurrency's trades i'm going to be using binance for all of this by the way um it just seems like what there's good support for. Um, it's going to take it three times a day uh, with eight hour intervals to see what the price is at. It's going to then mark the change in difference it's had in that. It's going to export that data to a sheet. And then that second program is going to import the sheet that the first data that the first program made. And it's going to implement a trading strategy. And the first one that I plan on writing is going to be one that will take advantage of a bull or a bear market. And it's going to be like a slow, not day trading method where it's going to as percent or as you collect more data it will it will use that data to determine what to trade with and it will have like depreciating value based on the day okay because i'm not Khan academy this is my third time attempting to explain this okay so let's say you're in a bull market usually the graph looks something like this it's not uh, entirely going up so what this could do for example is take the last 10 day or all, all the time you've done but for this example Let's just, because it'll be zero draw, let's say the last five days. So let's say there was a 1% increase in return all four of those days. And the last day, it had like a minus 1% return. So it dipped a little bit. So what it could do is can take this minus 1%, and the program is going to like take that as like a minus 1 value. But then let's say this 1% return that happened at this day it can divide by like 10, so its value is worth slightly less than what has happened recently. So you're still getting a 0.9 positive value. And so you're still going to be, while buying less, you're still buying during these dips. And unless you're going, and hopefully what that will do would mean that it's going to implement some sort of long-term strategy. So it's going to have you just keep buying during a bull market, and it's and that's all it's going to do. And then once you start entering a bear market, it'll start just continuously selling during that. Um, Hopefully that explanation makes sense. So, and that's also just a single trading strategy. I want it to be able, so that way you're able to implement different trading strategies, like maybe some that are like, take this 10% and maybe turns it into like a 50% uh, deduction in how often it does it. And that would be more like day trading. 
uh, just taking the data from that data buy or sell, which would be a really simple program, or you could have different things that maybe don't even use depreciating returns on data and does some other stuff to implement different strategies. Like programs can express like mathematical stuff like that, but I'm kind of retarded, so it's hard for me to put into words. I also don't understand the programming well enough. <laughs> so um, step three is just the trading API or the fake trading. Uh, Binance has a thing called fake paper. Okay, it's called paper trading, I think. Binance has a program where it can pretty much give you an emulation as though you are trading even if you aren't which is what we'll be doing initially for sure because then that will provide um a way to test this without any risking losing any actual real money which would be pretty cool uh because i don't really have any to throw around right now and i think that would be dumb too even if i did and it simply takes this information and it uses this to trade into this and then the information from this third one is fed into this fourth program and this is definitely the most future part of it. It's going to take a really long time to even get to this step. And it's going to take the data that it's learned and compare that over what time period you determine to see how it would have done compared to other trading strategies. Um, and it can also use the data it's taken from your trades to try to refine the strategy. So let's say that it's saying like over a 100 day period, it would have been actually optimal that instead of doing a long term strategy that you did a day trading one or something like that through the similar depreciating returns or depreciating value on data. Hopefully this makes sense. I, I should say I'm not interested in this because I like think it's going to make me a millionaire. I'm not interested in this for actually earning money at all. I'm literally just using this to learn programming. Uh, because this sounds fun. So whenever I was in university before I dropped out the second time, I was actually probably going to know, I was in the process actually of changing my major from computer science into economics. So this is something I enjoyed ever since politics kind of became really cancer in 2015. And I was really active in politics before that. I got more into economic stuff because it was just kind of fun. I am far from an expert and I'd never got as into economics as I did other things. Saying the word economics too is very vague, but I do kind of mean it that way. Cause I didn't really just like, I wasn't really into day trading or like entirely investing. Like I got also into a lot of different governmental models of how to run economic shit and had some interest in some local stuff. But regardless, Jester's day of politics are long gone. That was very much so some shit I was interested in as a teenager and as a kid, but is definitely no longer with me. <laughs> I do not trust anyone in a suit. That little rant over. Hopefully you guys understand what this is trying to do. Um, if not, hopefully I can just get it kind of built and start showing you guys. Uh, just to start off, um, I'm going to try to start making a program that will use some sort of API that Binance has. Hopefully I'm able to back catalog some stuff. That way I'm not starting with only collecting data starting today. And then I can actually like request from the API prices at a specific time. And I'm able to like build an Excel sheet. So quick random gesture. Um, I was kind of looking through like some of this program this other guy made. Uh, I'm going to, I think, avoid like a plague to look at other people's projects in their entirety. Because when I'm looking at that, I'm really tempted to um, like copy and paste massive chunks of his code. So instead, what I'm going to do is I will only specifically ask questions and then find ways on how to ask those specific questions and try to keep it pretty narrow. Because if I start looking at broad stuff like how to make a crypto trading bot with Python, it throws me into a pretty bad trap of um seeing what someone else has done instead of trying to solve the problem myself. Because I'm not, like I said, I'm not making this for the final product. I'm making it in sake of learning. The funny mic is going to haunt me until the day that I die. Um, so for these next couple of clips, the next rest of this video with excluding the outro that I will actually bother to re-record, I managed to do the entire thing in the funny mic on accident. So it isn't like completely cut out. I'm going to leave in parts. What the fuck is this? So you might notice some camera quality difference. Um, I'm selling my nice camera because I got it for documentary stuff and I don't really need it. Uh, my good old glorious C922 will do the job just fine. And so, but regardless, I spent, I think, something like three hours trying to import libraries. 
And I think part of it is that I'm just kind of a retarded person, which, okay, it's like, take, fuck Windows. Like, I've been, you have to go through so many settings, you like, go to your PC, and by properties, and then advanced system settings, and environmental variables, and you click this, and you're like, the fuck is this? You're like, oh wait, I don't need to be in this path, I need to be in this path down here, and you gotta figure out all the shit, and you delete shit, and add shit at random until it works, and you ask some guy who knows more about what he's doing than you do, and just have him fucking hopefully help you do it. So I was doing that, I was reading, like, fucking, like, can't import fair libraries python vs code and you're just like oh that's really cool so can you help me with this problem like maybe stack overflow is going to be uh and you're like oh cool like i don't know what i'm doing already and now this dude's writing a fucking college thesis about the situation like 10 paragraph long answers and it's just god i mean it's still useful information i actually learned a fair bit from that post but i just there's so much shit that i'm just trying to read and i was trying to just get, i was just trying to and I had to fuck with a whole bunch of key shit, and I was just throwing my hands at the wind for like two hours. It fucking sucked. It's working now, though. Alrighty, so I'm checking back in really quick. Uh, the first thing I kind of wrote out that I wanted to work on was find a way to print data into the console. And I'm actually finally there. Uh, if any of you guys are programmers, uh, ignore all of this. Uh, this. I'm just fucking around and like learning shit, and this is an absolute mess right now. It's kind of funny, so I'm keeping most of it in comments, and it's fun to look back at it. I can now run this, and it's going to accomplish that first goal of I want to be able to pull data from the Binance API and then have that formatted in such a way that will be easy for me to work with. I still need to adjust it a little bit, but I'm done with that step. So that's pretty cool. Feels good. I was able to do that. Um, so I am ridiculously lucky. So I'm not like... This is like in a crazy good jumping off point, but there's this guy called Algo Vibes, this fucking German cunt, who has a crazy large amount of information about using Python to write automated cryptocurrency shit. Uh, I'm not going, I'm not like gonna copy his project to try to use it, but I'm able to, this, quite a few of his videos, learn all the information that I need to make what I particularly want to make. So this guy is a fucking saint. This is probably making something that would have been weeks of work or like months of work into like a week, I think. Okay, there we go. Jesus Christ. Okay, so the um, the bot is working. It can make real money trades at the moment. Uh, so what I can do is I can just pretty much run the program. This is the example of a trade that was made. A screenshot of my balance that was happening. I made three cents. So what did in this example? This was my balance originally. It then bought about $10 USD worth of Ethereum. Then whenever Ethereum had a big enough jump, it sold the Ethereum back into USDT and it kept the excess in Ethereum. So I want to mention two things. The first one is that there is a channel called Algo Vibes. If you're interested in learning stuff with Python um, or with working with Binance and stuff like that, this guy's pretty fucking awesome for learning. There's also a second project, and that is uh, the, a I actually found an up-to-date, well-taken care of uh, Python crypto trading bot, and it's done by some dude who is uh, trying to advert. It's completely open source because he uses it to almost advertise the posts he makes on Medium. Um, pretty awesome dude. So these are two really, really amazing resources. If you're interested on doing stuff with Python, specifically in the realm of making bots for crypto, not exactly my interest, but it's relevant to what the last project I was working on. It's pretty neat. Just wanted to shout those out. So this is going to be the last of the devlogs. I am going to just start doing stuff offline now. I, I don't, I think this, like, not enough people are interested, which is okay, I don't really care. I think that the format I'm doing of ranting a lot is just tiring, and I feel like it takes away my time from actually programming, and I don't view this as something I, like, the making video part of something that I don't care as much about. I'm just trying to make stuff on YouTube again, but I'll be honest, I've kind of figured out that I really like streaming and making highlights for those streams. Like I was, I've been on here long enough. I've tried enough things where it's like, at this point, I know what I like. Um, and it's not going to be a job at least that I'm aware of. And I'm not really kind of doing it with that intention. I'm just kind of having a good time and trying to make stuff people enjoy. You know, I don't think there's any reason for me to continue making these. Um, I feel like that if I wanted to, I could do take a more traditional route and focus more on, like, 
showing effectively like my progress and like taking notes and like bumping up the production quality but like ah fuck it <laughs> like i don't want to do that i just want to expedite me being able to stream go back to streaming as soon as possible um so yeah i'm gonna try some stuff and i will work on it offline so i love you gamers this is the last thing you'll hear from me unless it's some random weird compulsive shit post for a while probably but i appreciate the couple of people that did end up watching these and I hope I can be back to streaming soon. That's really what I want to do.